In this video, we'll create a painting in virtual reality. Hello everyone, Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com and in this video we're going to take a look at digital painting in virtual reality. Honestly, it's an exciting time to be a lop as a creator. We have so many new technologies, in fact new technologies are invented almost on a daily basis that allow us for new and exciting ways to create and express ourselves. And one of those new technologies of course is virtual reality. Now when most of us think of virtual reality we probably think of virtual reality experiences or even video games. But there are brand new technologies and processes available to us to create and build things in virtual reality. And of course, one of those new programs is Google Tilt Brush, which of course is produced by Google. Now I'm using a virtual reality set here made by HTC. This is the HTC Vive. And you can see here with the Vive, we have two controllers. Now in virtual reality, one of these controllers will become your palette and the other one will become your paintbrush, depending on if you're right-handed or left-handed and it may seem like this seems strange and it does seem strange in reality but once you're in virtual reality it's very intuitive making brush strokes but what's so exciting about this especially for someone like myself who's a traditionally trained artist is when you make a brush stroke in virtual reality you can walk around it in fact you can even take a brush stroke and wrap it around yourself it really is true truly an exciting experience if you've ever experienced virtual reality you know what I mean. It's 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 only explainable once you have experienced it yourself. It's hard to explain the experience of virtual reality. Now, painting in virtual reality is such a unique experience as well, and it's super exciting for an artist like myself. Now, I love my Apple products, but I knew that if I was going to start doing virtual reality, I would need to have a powerful PC computer. Instead of going out and buying one myself, I decided to build one from scratch. Here's a look at the computer that I built and of course this was a learning experience for me. It was the first time I had done anything like that and I was pleasantly surprised when I pushed the button for the first time and the computer started as expected. Now of course using this program in virtual reality takes some getting used to so I want to share with you my first experience with using the program and the first painting that I created. So when we first opened Google Tilt Brush we're in this magical enchanted forest and you can hear the forest sounds and you're in this three-dimensional environment and already you're blown away. So we'll go ahead and create a new sketch and here I'm just playing around with the different options here. There are a variety of crazy brushes in here. You can see there's embers, there's stars, there's lots of different things. You can even paint with electricity, which is I think the first brush that I go to here as I'm just kind of acclimating myself with the palette. So as we take the electricity brush and start pulling out strokes, you can see the actual brush stroke is animated, which is pretty cool. But along with that, we also have an auditory sound that goes along with the marks that we're making. So not only is the painting process or the creation process exciting, but there's also sound that goes along with it, which adds to the experience. Here's another brush, and again, this is another one of the animated brushes. You can see these pieces of light just moving. We can easily change the color by using the color picker, which is a very basic, straightforward color picker. Let's try a different brush. We'll paint with some bubbles, and again, the bubbles are animated. We can change the size of the brush. We'll make some slightly larger bubbles here. And what's exciting is you can walk right into your painting and, and watch those brush strokes move around you as you interact with the uh, virtual space. Here's the disco brush, again, another animated brush. And yet another animated brush here. Here are some embers. And again, it's just exciting to play around with each one of these different brushes and see what happens. Here's the fire brush, which makes an interesting sound when you're making the marks. And I'm just walking around in my space here as I'm pulling and dragging these brush strokes out. I'm making big strokes with my entire arm. It really gets your entire body involved in the process. 
Now, as you can see and probably imagine, it's just fun being in this virtual reality space, playing with different brush strokes and walking around in the brush strokes. But right now we just have a basically a discombobulated mess. So at this point, my creative juices are really flowing and I'm starting to really appreciate what you can actually make with this particular program in this particular virtual reality environment. So I decided to go ahead and create a virtual reality painting from scratch. And one of the cool things is you can bring in a photo reference. So I brought in this photo reference of a bluebird. And then I just started thinking about how I was going to go about creating a bluebird in three-dimensional space. Now, of course, since I'm trained traditionally as an artist, I'm starting here with a two-dimensional sketch. And my plans are to take this two-dimensional sketch and turn it into a three-dimensional form. This is really akin to sculpting. It's more closely related to sculpting than it is actual drawing or painting. But I, nonetheless, I started with a uh, kind of a wire type sculpture of the bird. So once I had a two dimensional sketch in place, I started making the two dimensional sketch a little three dimensional. And by that, I'm thinking about making a wire sculpture. It's very much similar to creating a wire sculpture if you've ever done that before. So I'm just creating basically a wire frame for which I'm going to build the three dimensional form of the bird from. Now it's time to go in and start building some of the volume associated with the bird. And I'm concentrating just mainly on the outside portion. So I switched over to the larger texture brush, which I felt like closely mimicked that the texture of the feathers of the bird. And then I just started pulling brush strokes around that, that wire frame that I created initially. And as I pulled these strokes out, slowly the form of the bird started to make a lot of sense. And just like when you get into a drawing or painting, you kind of get into this mode where everything's kind of clicking together. And I have very much felt myself getting into that frame of mind working on the bird in 3D. But there was also the aspect of using my entire body, too. So I wasn't used to this type of movement, of course, when you're creating a drawing or painting. I was getting down on the floor. I was moving around, looking at the bird from all different angles as I went. Now, one thing that's really interesting about painting in this way is that we don't really have to think about the light source too much, depending on the brush you choose in the program. That's because there's already a light source in place within the program itself. And for the textured brush, for example, the textured marks that are created by that brush are reliant on the light source within the scene. So one side of the bird that was on the opposite side of the light source was naturally darker. And underneath the bird, it was naturally darker as well. So I didn't have to worry about changing colors, going to a darker value, for instance, in the areas of shadow. Now I'm just going back into the bird at this point and adding some of the details like the tail, adding a few more colors like the color on the underside of the bird, and of course the, the eyes and some of the colors around the beak as well. Here you can see I'm getting down underneath the tail and at this point I'm on the floor. We'll add a bit of variation in the color as well. We can just add those brush strokes right in inside of the brush strokes that are already there. And you can see you get quite a bit of depth there along with the, the texture. So really this experience is unlike anything that I've ever experienced before. And if you're kind of on the fence on whether or not this is a direction you should go or try out, I really highly encourage you to try out uh, doing some painting in virtual reality. And the more research I do on virtual reality and creating art in virtual reality, the more I'm learning that there are a lot of programs out there available just beyond Google Tilt Brush. I believe Google Tilt Brush was one of the first ones made available, but now there's a whole slew of programs that are being developed. This painting in total took just about 45 minutes or so. It didn't take very long to create this bird in three-dimensional space. And what's really odd about it is when you take your goggles off after you've been working on it for a few minutes, you, you almost expect to turn around and see your painting sitting there behind you. And of course, it's not there because it was all created in virtual reality.
So at this point, now I've got the basic form of the bird in place, and I'm fairly happy with the textural marks that are created. So now it's time to pull out a couple of legs underneath. And for this, I switched over to uh, the tune brush, which you can see here kind of creates a black outline around it. But one thing that I really like about the tune brush is the volume that's created by pulling the brush out. You can see it almost makes these tubes that taper at the end. But before I finished off the talons, I needed to create the branch or the piece of the tree that the bird is standing on. So I got on the floor and I just started making circular marks up, kind of, again, creating a wireframe. And then I filled in the outside portion of the branch. And again, just making strokes up and down and that branch just materializes here in front of us. Then I went back and added a little bit of a darker brown to create the impression of the bark around the branch. And you can see some of that yellow color shows through, giving it just a little bit more of an added sense of realism. Of course, this doesn't look like a realistic bird because it's so textured, but it does look, it has its own unique look about it. And once our branch was in place, I went back and added the talons. Again, using the tune brush. Now, you might be wondering, what is it like to actually make a mark in virtual reality? Because when we make a mark with a paintbrush on a canvas, for example, we have a, a level of resistance that happens. And that feedback is important, of course, to any artist. This is true if we're making marks with a graphite pencil, for example, or even a stick of pastel. That resistance, of course, and that feedback that we get is important. Well, I was pleasantly surprised that when I made a mark, there's a slight vibration that happens in the controller that gives you a little bit of that feeling of resistance. Of course, it's nowhere near the same as you might expect with traditional drawing media. But nonetheless, there is a level of feedback that happens when you're making these marks. Once I had the bird drawn out or painted out or sculpted out, however you want to say it, I, I went back and started playing around with some of the colors of the lights and also the environment that the bird was in. Of course, there's lots of options of different environments that you can choose from, but there's also the option always of creating your own environment. But since this was my first painting and my first exposure, I just wanted to play around with a simple subject. Now, another cool feature is that you can record a video of your subject as well. And here I'm recording a video, and honestly, it felt like I was holding a camera in my hand walking around a three-dimensional sculpture. And then the painting is complete, and I can revisit it anytime I want. I can open that file up, I can edit it, and I can also share it. It really is just an amazing piece of technology or combination of technologies that we have at our disposal here with virtual reality. I'm excited about what is going to be available in the future and what is available already for us. If you enjoyed this video, then I know that you'll enjoy being a member at thevirtualinstructor.com. Our comprehensive membership program includes video courses on drawing and painting, weekly live lessons, eBooks, lesson plans for teachers, weekly critiques, and much, much more. To learn more about our program, just visit thevirtualinstructor.com forward slash members or click on the card in the upper right hand corner. And if you want to check out three of our course modules for free, you can do so. Just click on the link on your screen now. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.